<laughs> Hello, nipple dusters and crop thrusters. I don't know what the hell I just said, but we're back on Chaos Child. We are c coming close to what must be the end. We're slowly getting there. Um, it's, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Slowly but surely. <laughs> Surprisingly, it was Aramura, not Nono, who slapped me. She hit me so hard that the impact travelled all the way to my ears and made them ring. Don't be stupid. What do you think you're trying to impress? <laughs> oh, sorry, what are you laughing at? Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. I put my hand to my cheek where she'd struck me and it felt a little hot. I asked her to do it again and then choke me and then stand on me. I'd laugh because it hadn't hurt as hard as, I, as when Nono did it. Nono was used to slapping people's cheeks after all. Or maybe she was just really strong. But Aramura seemed to think I was laughing because I wasn't worried at all. Her shoulders shook more violently with rage. It's too dangerous. You know what they're planning. I was going to hear what she has to say. I think it's fine. Don't lie to me. You know it doesn't work. Aramura was out of breath and seriously angry. She was worried about me. Takuru. Uki and Yuto were standing next to her, looking worried. I leaned down so I was at their height. Don't worry. It's true that I'm just going to hear what she has to say. But what came after that is a lie, right? You're probably going to be killed. Kunosato. Of course I knew that. There was a good chance I'd be killed. And Dad would be the one who killed me. But I wish she wouldn't say it in front of Uki and Yuto. You've never even been in a fight, am I wrong? Yes, but I had to go. My head knew it was stupid, my heart was filled with terror. But there was something even deeper that drove me forward. Kurusu wouldn't want that, I know it. What? Uki told me about the letter. I see. Are you going to... Do you want to forget about what she wanted? So, yeah, you're right. She'd be really mad. She'd probably slap me hard across the face like Aramura just did. But I'm going anyway. Aramura looked like she was about to raise her hand again. But then she stopped, clenched it into a fist and lowered it. Her eyes were a little red as she glared at me. Why? Why? I'm sorry. Her voice was soft, so soft I could barely hear it. I lowered my head, unable to even look at her. Take her of Uti and Yuto. Uti? Uki and Yuto, okay? What the fuck was that name I just said? It's not my problem. You're the eldest, right? You need to come back safe and be their big brother. You're terrible, she whispered as she left the room. Someone suddenly waved something in front of my face and I let back. Kazuki had come up next to me. I wasn't sure when. She always surprised me like this. You're still here? I can't leave you all here, her face seemed to say. She was holding a piece of candy on a stick. They're called a lollipop, Takaru. A lollipop? How many of these did she have? I couldn't refuse her, so I took it and put it in my pocket. I'd probably never eat it, though. Sorry for getting you involved in this. Keep an eye on Yuki and Yuto until they go, and then take care. I didn't think she'd do it. But I didn't want her going with two of them. I'd feel terrible for her, her family if that happened. Hmm. She nodded like she always did. I tried to make sure that was a yes, but before I could, she ran out of the room after Aramura. Kunasato was here too, so it would be okay, right? She would make it home, right? Ano, I'm Yuto spoke up, afraid, as he saw me watch her go. <sighs> to be honest, I wasn't sure what to say. Anything I said felt like it would just make him more nervous. I tried to choose my words carefully, but in the end, this was all I could come up with. I'm leaving. I'll catch up with you guys later. I could tell from his face that he realised it was one of the white lies that adults often tell children. Children's. For some reason my brain wanted to say. But he didn't say anything. He just looked at me with eyes that were redder than Aramura's. Goodbye. We'll be waiting for you. Yeah. We'll be waiting for you as long as it takes. Uh, yeah. We're we'll waiting too, for as long as it takes. Uh, yeah. Maybe Yuki's hand on his gave him strength because he finally forced himself to say one last thing. I'm sorry, Yuto. Thanks, Yuki. Okay, I'm off. 
I checked the time. There wasn't much time left. And if I stayed there any longer, my resolve would begin to waver. I nodded one last time to the two of them, then turned around. It was decided that Shinjo would drive me to Hikariwo. I wanted him to take the others to Akihabara as soon as possible, but I didn't see how I could get through the area of, around Shibuya Station on my own. Miyashiro. Miyashiro. As I left the, in the car, Kunisato called to me from behind. You've got your phone, right? <laughs> I put my hand inside my pocket to check. Of course, it was there. <laughs> I do, why? <laughs> If you find anything on the committee, no matter what, contact me immediately. I chuckled. That was exactly what I'd expected her to say. I didn't know if I'd find anything, but I promised that I would. I know he told me to get you out of Shibuya. I agreed because she told me that if I got inside Shibuya, it would be close to the committee. Yeah. But if you decide not to go, there's no reason for me to stop you. I have no special need for you in particular. As long as I have Yamazoe and Arimura, that's enough. Yeah, yes, that's right. She was correct. If getting a psychic out of Shibuya would cause something to happen, Uki and Aramura would do just as well as I would. So, we're not waiting for you, okay? We seem to be testing my resolve one last time. So I took her dead look so I looked her dead in the eyes and answered. That's fine, I understand that. <laughs> but for a while after that she said nothing. She seemed to be for once at a loss for words. I frowned. Did she not like that answer? Is something wrong? About what you were saying before. She finally opened her mouth hesitantly. She was probably talking about the call I'd gone from Serika. When she told me that she was the one who killed my parents. If that's true. What? Did you figure something out? No. Kunisato probably found Serika's words strange, just like I did. They didn't make sense. And Kunisato probably had a theory of her own, and one she was reluctant to share. But in the end, she put her hand on my shoulder without saying a word. Huh? Until now, all she'd ever done was grab me or choke me, so I was surprised. I never expected this. Either way, you should find the answer for yourself. Make sure that whatever you do, you don't regret it. And the words she said were different than usual, too. Kunisata was saying something nice to me, a psychic. What? Uh, oh, um, no. I was so surprised that I said something I shouldn't have. Do, do I, I'd rather you send me off with a last goodbye from K. I I was listening. Hell no. I refuse to play the role of goody goody suck up and not trying to manipulate information. Get going. She pushed me away with her hand she placed on my shoulder. I suddenly felt embarrassed. Why had I said that? I was so embarrassed that I tried to hurry into the car. Kinosato looked at me and said, If you really want to hear K again, wait till the next broadcast. I turned around and looked at her face one more time. Her features were elegant, and her beautiful almond-shaped eyes were almost frozen cold. They never betrayed what she was really thinking. Her personality was as cool as ice, befitting a dedicated scientist who was always willing to do whatever it took to achieve her goal, regardless of the cost. But sometimes I caught a glimpse of, something bur of some burning passion inside her. She really was a mysterious girl. Alright, there was one last thing I had to ask her. Since this might really be my last chance. What? What? Why are you staring at me? Kunosato, what's your power? What? The distance between us had started to shrink, but grew back with one that one question. I felt all the air around me freeze. I panicked. I mean, I saw it in your room. Saw what? A die sword. That was yours, right? Huh? This I thought things between us would end with another series of cold insults from her, Kinosato started to laugh. She kept laughing in a low voice as I stood there with my mouth hanging open. All I could do was stand there and watch. I didn't know Kinosato could laugh like that. Are you really a gigalomaniac? You can't even tell the difference between the real thing and a fake. A fake? This is a replica I have for research purposes. My lab in America is based off some duck. My lab in America made it based off some documents from six years ago. It was an attempt to find out why, even if the shapes may vary, all the pipes to the Dirac Sea take the form of a sword. But it didn't work. They gave me the useless piece of junk. It's not good for anything but taking up space. But I do use it as a way to hang things up to dry. And then she laughed again. As she was done laughing, she pushed me into the car, and before she closed the door, 
Oh, right, your classmate Ito, was it? He looks like he'll survive. Oh. You seem to have forgotten, but you promised to be my guinea pig in exchange. Come back and keep your promise. Then she closed the door. I nodded from behind the window and mouthed the words, thank you for everything. Everyone really was trying to make me feel better. Everyone really did want to see me again. But now I was going alone down a path that meant that it might never happen. Rip. It's a very long fade. There we go. It's quiet, huh? Hi. Yes. Sorry, just quickly having a drink. Ah, oh god, oh, put it down, oh. God damn it, shouldn't have a drink. Shinja said, mostly to himself in the driver's seat. The Shibuya intersection was overflowing with people. They were all overlook they were all looking up at the footage of Memorial Memorial Park being displayed on the big TV screens. The time was ten twenty one PM. Seven minutes until the time where the earthquake began six years ago. When the time arrived, there would be a moment of silent prayer and the festival would reach its finale. Everyone at the festival seemed to be heading for the park or the intersection in front of the station to participate. I could see a man who looked like a member of the city council on the screen. From the subtitles, he seemed to be giving a speech about the restoration project. <laughs> Not again. Keep, keep your head down. Okay. Shinjo had gone in this car just to take us out of the Shibuya, and the windows were tinted so I didn't have to worry about anyone seeing me, but there was no way to hide from anyone looking at me from the front, just in case I kept myself as far down in the space below the seat as I could. We'd run into a lot of roadblocks once we'd entered the area, with volunteer staff stopping us from going forward. Each time Shinjo had shown his police, police notebook and explained that this was a police car, and each time they let us through. But that meant that it was taking us twice as long as usual. Giddy, giddy. It'll be, it'll, it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be close. We may not actually make it by 10.28pm. Shinjo said as he weaved the car through the crowds of people. No, I'm just grateful you've given me left. I never would have made it to Hikari while on my own. If you get a little later than that, you're more likely running to Sakuma. You're going anyway, right? Yes. I can see Shinjo's face in the rear view mirror. He put his fingers up to the bridge of his nose with the expression was pained. As a policeman, this is the worst thing I could possibly do. I'm sending a minor into a dangerous situation. If he's in the theatre cube, I'd like to go with you and arrest him, but I don't have anything that proves his guilt. And someone's putting pressure on the higher-ups in the police department too. It's like a cheap detective drama. Is that committee really that powerful? Always no one knows the details. No, the person who did was buried and forgotten. Irritated, Shinjo swerved the car around a group of pedestrians that were standing in the middle of the street. I ducked down so I couldn't be spotted from outside. It was a little cramped. Was that, person that you was that the person you were talking about this afternoon? I remembered him talking about that. About how the case was his way of avenging the detective he respected a lot. Shinjo ignored me and kept looking forward. It felt like his silence was a yes. Silence was a yes. Mishiro. Huh? What? Shinjo lowered the window just to crack to hear what was going on outside. Where are you? It's almost over. You're always going to think you screw up. Takara Mishiro, come out. Just a bunch of drunks. In front of us, by the side of the road, was a van advertising the Restoration Festival. A group of people had climbed on top of it. They must have been college aged, and they were holding beers in their hands. Wrong side of town. Hearing them or even seeing them was upsetting. I leaned into the seat, closed my eyes, and lowered my head again. Kunosato uses that word too sometimes. Shinjo closed the window and started to drive away from all the commotion. Wrong side is means on the wrong side of the information divide, right? Yes. I watched all the drunks pass by the other side of the tinted windows. They don't know anything, and they don't want to know anything. They don't know about the people manipulating them, or what those people want, or what the people they're talking about are going through. Violence, murder, the darkness in the human heart, they think they understand these things because they read or hear about them, but they don't even think about what they must really be like. Ever since I first met you, I could tell knowing was very important to you. Um... The first time I met Shinjo was... During the Love Hotel case, you broke into the crime scene on your own. Oh. He was right. Shinjo was the one in charge of that case, and that's how we'd met. 
You're going to go see Inoue because there's something you want to know, right? Yes. I had to know what Serika was really after, and the real reason she'd come into existence. That's right. You can say I'm going to find out about myself. What had I wanted during the earthquake? What wish had I created her? I realized for the first time that I was trying to find out more about myself than Serika. That's the same kind of person he was. Huh? I looked in the rearview mirror again. Shinjo was still watching the traffic in front of him. That detective, he was obsessed with finding things out, and he was willing to do whatever it took, even if it meant going against the rest of the police force. The Mose used to get mad at him all the time. She said he was going to get getting in too deep. I see. Shinjo's voice took on a strangely different character. His tone changed from one of nostalgia to one of sorrow. And then, he finally got in too deep. That was the answer to his silence before. Had he been killed by the committee? I don't know how he died, but he must have been satisfied. At least, I don't think he had any regrets. But, that doesn't mean I can just accept his death. I couldn't go get him at the time. I couldn't stop him, it's frustrating. If Nono was, if Kuruzu was here, I'm sure she'd be feeling the same way about you. I fell silent. There was nothing I could say. But I was truly glad that he was the one who read Nano's letter, and that he was the one who was helping me. When I reached the Hikariwo, I realized that something was wrong. It was too quiet. Normally, even at this hour, the Hikariwo would be fairly noisy, but it was completely silent. There were no murmurs, no drunken shouting like I'd heard just a minute ago. It started, huh? Oh. I checked the time. 10.28 p.m. Everyone had gathered in front of the Memorial Park or the TV in front of the station for a silent prayer. Shinjo switched the car's navigation system to TV mode. It was displaying footage of the Memorial Service. Or Memorial Park even. Fuck. Words are hard. I saw the ceremony and gasped. All the sound was gone from Shibuya. It was like a movie set. Suddenly I was struck by a terror even greater than before. It felt like the moment of silence was for me. As I headed to my death. I forced myself to smile, and tried to tell myself that I was shaking from excitement, not fear. My mind was a confused jumble of thoughts. Half of me wanted to go home, and half of me wanted to stay, but I forced myself to keep going. That's right. I have to know, no matter what. <laughs> Shinjo tossed something at me. What is it? What? Wait, this is... I felt the sensation of rubber as I grasped it. I tried to spread it out and stopped. I only think this is all about with me. I hope it's enough. No, thank you. I lowered my head in thanks. There were still people standing between me and the theatre cube. Sorry, this is as far as I can go. I need to get us out of the city. He looks at his watch. I know. Get into Taki Harbour as quickly as you can, thank you. Once they're safe, I'll come right back. Don't die. Right. I wiped my sweaty hands off my pants and nodded. Then I took a deep breath to calm myself down. I put this on the sumo sticker mask that Shinjo had given me and stepped out into the Shibuya utterly without sound. The silent prayer was continuing, and this was my chance. Several people looked at me as I got out of the car, but they must have been used to seeing people in the mask. They quickly lost their interest and lowered their head once more. Everything was fine. They hadn't figured out who I was. I looked up the Hikariwo building, which towered above me like some kind of fortress. The people around me all seemed suspicious, but I made it to the theatre floor without anyone saying anything. But then I realised that something was wrong and stopped. <clears throat> and I'm going to end the episode here. If you liked the video, don't forget to leave a like in the section below. And if you want to see more of this, do subscribe to the channel as I upload every day. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.